Greetings folks, Dave here with Ben Teardrop. Been a minute since we've made a video, so I figured it's about time. It's January out here in Bend, Oregon. A lot of our customers come from the valley and they're a little hesitant to pick up at this point because of the rain and the snow and all the weather that we experience this time of year. So we're sitting on a few extra trailers in the lot and I figured it'd be a good opportunity to show you some of the options that we offer as of lately and just have you check out a few. Check it out. Well, let's start with the galley kitchen. That's pretty much the best thing about having a teardrop, having yourself a little outdoor cooking situation. Um, there's quite a few different little configurations we can do for you, but probably the most common question is what is the standard galley configuration? Well, here it is right here. Basic galley, you get three partitions. You've got a USB charger here, 12 volt charger there. You've got lights, you've got water tank you've got sink and then under here you've got under counter storage so the under counter storage works great for pots and pans and propane and paper plates and all that kind of stuff that you need to bring along with you that's where we keep the solar conditioner if you get solar the fuse for the ac power if you go with the ac power setup this is a kill switch so if you're storing it inside and you're not getting solar you can kill power so you're not slowly draining your battery this is a battery charger right here and then down below is where we keep the battery. And there's a little bit of storage down there, but we don't use too much of that. And that's a spot for a secondary battery if you wanted to put one in there. So that's under counter storage. Uh, this guy has a few upgrades from the standard galley. Uh, aluminum countertop, AC shore power hookups, so you can have 110 power. At a, as long as you're somewhere that's providing power, you've got a shore hookup on the side here plug into that and that's going to turn on these outlets you also have one in the in the cabin partition galley drawer over here not only do they have the drawer and the aluminum countertop they have the cope woodcraft slide out cutting board which is kind of cool for cutting your stuff or whatnot so that's an option you can add on what else do we got? I think we got an upgraded galley here somewhere. There we go. And then you can get an upgraded galley, which will add on a removable spice rack. So you can take this over to your picnic table or whatever. Uh, sauce rack for the side and then whiskey wine rack over here. So if you go with the up upgraded setup, it'll come with the drawer and then the whiskey wine rack, sauce rack and spice rack. And then they've also added the slide out cutting board and aluminum countertops. And then this is a six by 12, the bigger camper that we make. So you've got two pop-ups as opposed to just one. And it's a foot wider than your standard five by 10 or five by eight. One last option I forgot to mention, if you're doing like a 12 volt appliance and you want it to be under counter, like a little Dometic fridge or things like that, we can add a 12 volt plug there. And then this is a look at the little control panel that you get. You've got a USB charger right here, which also tells you the voltage on the battery. You've got a 12 volt charger here, and then you've got your lights for your galley. All our campers come on full size wheels and tires, so you can go highway speeds. That's a 15 inch tire. And all our fenders are welded to the frame so you can hop up on here, hang out, get up to your gear up top. So this is a uh, roof vent. That's got an awning situation. This is uh, 100 watt solar. That's pretty much put those on all campers these days. Great for keeping your battery topped off. So we're a Yakima and a Thule dealer so we can provide racks for you if you like. Or at the bare minimum, if you wanna do your own rack setup, we can just do the mounts. I think I got something here. Yeah, right, this guy right here. So at the bare minimum, if you're gonna do your own racks, we just ask that you have us install the gutter mount brackets, uh, just cause it's load bearing is going through the, the body of the camper. And then from there you can provide your own towers and bars and they're really pretty easy to put on yourself. Here's a look under the chassis. Um, unlike some builders, we actually shell the bottom with aluminum as well which gives you a nice seal down below. We actually build an insulated subfloor as well, which keeps it a little bit warmer than just a piece of treated plywood down there. A um, Couple of the options that we offer right there, rear stabilizer jacks, not really needed unless you're gonna do a rooftop tent. 
Um, but if you are going to put a tent up there, it's pretty nice to have that. So when the kids are up there messing around, it doesn't jostle the, the camper itself. Uh, we could also add a receiver hitch right here. This is great for a bike rack, cargo rack, things of that nature. It's rated for 200 pounds, so don't put a motorcycle back there or something, but you could put bikes and things like that. If you are going to do a bike rack, we recommend the kind that swings out. That way you don't have to remove the bikes to get to the kitchen. And then a lot of people ask about the plumbing. We do not do a gray water tank. Gray water tanks freeze. You have to winterize them. We basically just plumb the, the plumbing to drain to the center of the camper. If you're camping in the dirt and you're using environmentally friendly soap, it's totally acceptable to have it just drain to the ground. If you happen to be camping somewhere paved and you don't like the direction where the water is draining, you just put a little bucket down there and um, easy peasy. When you have those gray water tanks, it's just a lot more work. Winterizing, finding a dump station, all that kind of stuff. So the whole point of our campers is to kind of skirt uh, a lot of the trappings of, of RV life. Now moving on to interior configurations. This is the five by 10, our most popular model. And this is probably our most popular setup. It's the bunk situation. So you've got a 58 and a half inch bunk by 30 inches deep, fit a kid until they get about five feet tall. And then they've added a window right here. That's an upgrade. And then over to this side, you've got USB charger, which is what most people do right up here. It also tells you, has a voltage meter on there, tells you how your battery's doing. You get a little overhead shelf, two corner cup holders. That's the standard setup for the five by 10. Option number two in the five by 10 is a partition shelving configuration. And that gives you a lot more space inside the cabin. If you're not uh, highly recommended, if there's no kids or sleeping inside, the queen size bed will come about a foot and a half, two feet from the back wall. So you've got all this area down below for a duffel bag or gear or whatnot. And then we've got the 11 inch deep partition shelves up above to hold gear. All our builds come with a 10 speed two way max fan. It blows in and out and it's whisper quiet. Let's see. So it's nice and quiet. Great for getting, moving the air around the camper. If you do a lot of cold weather stuff, great for pushing out moisture that accumulates inside the camper. And it blows in and out. So that is the five by 10. Now moving on to the six by 12 double family style unit. The floor here will fit a California King and then the bunk actually is a full-size platform bunk. So that'll fit a full-size bed, 70 and a half inches long by 54 deep. Our typical configuration here is two little cubbies on the interior, one long cubby in the center. And then underneath the back corners of the bunks, you've got outside access storage to cubbies. These are 24 by 24 inch cubbies right here. One modification we can do is if you don't want the 24 inch cubby, we can do a full length cubby that goes all the way across the, uh, the width of the camper. The only compromise you make there is you would lose this deep cubby in the center. It would just go straight across. So we can do that. And then what have they done here? They've added a window and then up here, they not only have a USB, but they also have a 12 volt USB is great and convenient for phones and things like that, but there's more amperage if you go with the 12 volt plug. So you could do like an electric blanket or CPAP machine, things like that. Most of our six by 12 customers have two or three kids. They pop them all up there on that bed to share. Um, if you don't have kids and you wanted a bigger camper like the six by 12, we can push the bunk back about 24 inches in. So you'd still have the three partitions with uh, the storage cubbies, but then you'd have a shorter shelf, which would really open up the space, give you a ton more room inside. So here's a good little side-by-side -side comparison. Six by 12, five by 10. Wish I had a five by eight to show you, but that one got, the one the couple that we had got out the other day. Um, but just imagine this one being two feet shorter. Bloop. And the interior cabin will just fit, a, just barely fit a queen size bed. Um, great for one person or two little people, but most people go for the five by 10. 
And then you got your six by 12 right here. Foot wider, two feet longer, wider galley, outside access storage, California king inside with a full size bunk, as opposed to queen size bed and a almost crib style bunk, 30 inches deep. Well, there you have it. These are our campers. Appreciate you watching. Thank you for all the interest and all the business, of course. Um, if you want more information on pricing options, all that kind of stuff, it's benteardrop.com. And uh, thanks for watching. Catch you at the campsite.